my name is Mart and I'm an education innovator. And uh, in the next few minutes, we're going to focus on looking at the innovation of education in general, what kind of value it brings for the learners and for the teachers, and how we can have a better education for everyone thanks to this. I've decided to spend my life in educational development. It's uh, very simply that uh, I believe that this is the easiest way that we can have a better society for everybody in the future. And I believe that if we prepare uh, children better for the life, we work also on the right value systems development, we will have a nicer uh, living environment for everybody on a personal level, on the society level, and also uh, in, in the level of, um, of our home planet being uh, still available to us after 100 years from now. current education system was uh, designed in 1850s. This means that the education system as we know it today is more or less 250 years old. If we look a little bit uh, into this time, the factory workers working 14 hour days, six days a week, the life environment is not that friendly at all. And what we are expecting from the workers in this environment is that everybody is not thinking too much on their own, but rather following orders and uh, not questioning too much what they're told, what they have to do. You might wonder, like, is this education system that was designed at this time really uh, fulfilling the promise that we are making to the kids today of preparing them for the life in 21st century working environment or entrepreneurship environment? I think Jack Ma has put it very nicely. It doesn't make sense to train humans to be more like robots in 21st century because we are never able to compete with robots in the areas that the robots are good at already. One of the easiest ways to have a reference point is to look at the World Economic Forum 2020 um, most important skills that people should have uh, today to be successful in life. Most of these, these are soft skills like the ability to work in a team, the ability to uh, navigate complex information. Do the kids need to be following orders or do they need to be, be in inventive and find their own way and be able to build their own strategy? This generation that is on the job market at the moment is the first generation in human history that needs to reskill and upskill themselves during the time of uh, being after school. This is definitely uh, something that the schools need to. Uh, look at how can we prepare the, the children for a life where they're excited about learning new skills also after the school is finished. I will bring one example as an employer. If I'm thinking about an ideal person to come to work in a modern company, then I'm thinking about the person who can come into the office and say, hey, I know your company really well. This is the reason why I like your company. Um, here are the flaws in your company and they could be improved. And for example, I see this and this and this possibility to improve your, your company. And uh, I really like this concrete point. And if you give me this and this and this resource and an opportunity to work with you, I would really like to tackle this issue and uh, bring this kind of value to your organization. Instead, what I'm seeing today when the people are coming to the job interviews, usually is that the people uh, sitting behind the table have no understanding of why they're there, um, what kind of value they would like to bring in the life in general. So they haven't really thought about, um, about this, at least not on the level where they would be confident about uh, sharing uh, their, their mission of the life. And I think this is uh, something that uh, the education system needs to look at very seriously. Like how could we prepare the, the children to the modern working environment or business environment that is going to be expecting us? We need to recognize that uh, humans are learning machines designed by mother nature. And uh, we even have a positive feedback system in our brain designed to motivate us to learn more and overcome challenges. We literally get the dopamine injection in our brain if we overcome a challenge. 
humans in general in, in reality are really interested in learning and to getting getting to know new things and the question is how do we enable uh, people to keep this excitement alive in the human beings and uh, again this is a question for the teachers I, i'm more than certain that teachers they understand when they are doing something that is uh, inspiring the kids to learn more and when they're also doing something that is disempowering the kids in, in wanting to learn more. We can definitely use the modern technologies as well to help uh, the teachers to figure out and pinpoint uh, very precisely like which activity created uh, more enthusiasm towards learning something and which decreased the uh, enthusiasm for learning something. A few schools have uh, uh, given really good outcomes with uh, using learners uh, themselves to investigate the new tools and to prepare the classes a little bit to help uh, support the teachers with preparing the classes. So essentially, you as a teacher, you don't even need to go to into the details with uh, getting to know how to use this concrete new technology. You would empower the kids to uh, investigate the technology themselves and to uh, introduce it if it's useful to the other uh, children in the classroom. If we are able to inspire the kids and uh, get them to, to work on, on issues, themselves, they can develop up to 10 times faster than kids that are just following the curriculum-based learning. And we can bring in, for example, the flow theory here. Flow theory, invented in the 70s, says that the people are the most effectively learning when they are at about 80% or 85% correct uh, when they're doing uh, their lessons. And uh, if, they're, if your learner is 100% correct all the time, then they are we're going to lose motivation very quickly. And if they're more than 20% wrong, then again, they will lose motivation. And uh, that's where the adaptive uh, methodology uh, and learning content comes in. So we can keep the learner for a longer time in the narrow corridor of uh, effective and optimum learning. If you talk about the normal uh, secondary school teacher, uh, the teacher is uh, giving classes to around 200 kids every week. And if a teacher is giving, uh, let's say, 25 lessons, face-to-face -face les lessons, a teacher uh, would have about two minutes per student every week that they could use to uh, personalize the learning. If we talk about uh, adapting the learning to exactly each learner's uh, level, then it's a bit hard to do this without support of technology. If you are using uh, adaptive tools for learning, then, um, for example, this tool can help you to very quickly figure out what level uh, a student is today. So I'm imagining a future where the teacher has a digital learning assistant that helps to uh, analyze all of the kids in the classroom and recommend the best possible tools and methodologies for each of the learners. Teachers today might be a little bit worried that the technology will come and replace them. But I don't see this technology coming anytime soon. I see that it will focus on trying to support the teachers and getting better learning outcomes for the learners. But if we look um, a little bit further away into the future, we can start discussing about, okay, but um, how could be the education looking like in 100 years from now? It could be totally possible that in 100 years from now, we are going to learn matrix style, either you take a pill or, or you uh, connect yourself with a wire. Essentially, uh, it is possible that we'll figure out the way how to stimulate the neurons to uh, obtain uh, knowledge, download knowledge from a server straight away directly. If I'm thinking about the future of education, I'm um, uh, imagining uh, uh, beautiful field uh, of flowers and grass and somewhere in the middle of a very scenic uh, place like for example in the Alp mountains and the children sitting in a circle around the teacher and discussing all sorts of topics uh, that are, are interesting for them. Today it is possible to create something like this uh, in the with the help of virtual tools. Just imagine that we have to uh, learn according to the curriculum, uh, Amazon Jungle. And now uh, we have two different methodologies. One way to learn about it is that we just read in a geography book a few pages about Amazon Jungle. 
And the other possibility is that uh, we uh, take augmented reality, we create a portal in our classroom. And with the whole classroom, we step into the portal and we see what exactly Amazon Jungle looks like. We get the sounds of the Amazon Jungle. We can zoom into the frogs that are sitting on the leaves. Like now, I mean, if you have this picture in front of your eyes, there's two different pathways or methodological approaches to learn about the one and the same thing. Which one you believe will work better and which one the kids will be remembering better? I will um, just give a, one example of a tool that I was really blown away by uh, when I looked at augmented reality development and it's called the Mobi Lab and uh, it enables with five clicks to create new augmented reality elements for learning before uh, this kind of platforms. Uh, it was quite a lot of work to build augmented reality tools for learning, but with the new platforms, it's just a matter of a few clicks. My mission is to enable access to high quality education to everybody globally. And uh, I've been following this mission for the past 16 years. And the recent times have brought very interesting projects on the table. And we have put together a COVID response um, of companies that are willing to open up their resources for free to support the learners and educators in, in crisis. And it's called teachmillions.org. If um, a project is being done, let's say, in a village school somewhere in a rural, rural uh, countryside, then my goal is to think straight away, how could we make this new way of learning something available for the whole world? Because there might be similar schools in a similar situation that they would need to invent the same thing themselves. Uh, but uh, if we are able to start sharing between the schools, we, we can raise the quality of learning experience a lot faster. If we want to develop really great uh, tools for supporting learning and supporting teachers, then um, uh, what we need to actually start from is agreement regarding what's the purpose of education at all in the 21st century. We need to start asking this question at least on an annual basis on a very serious level. Like, why do we go to school? And uh, what kind of skills and what kind of lessons do we need to learn in the education system? Thank you very much for following the discussion today. I hope uh, it gave you some good thoughts about uh, how to improve uh, the education that you are having in your school. And stay curious.